Well, my friends, it's New Variant Week, according to the media. In today's show, we're going to talk more about why the media is talking so much about the BA286 variant, dubbed Parola. We're going to draw upon information from the British Medical Journal titled COVID-19, Scientists Sound Alarm Over the New BA286 Parola Variant. BA286, which some media outlets have nicknamed Parola, is another subvariant of the Omicron variant, this one descending from the BA2 strain that led to the widespread COVID cases in the start of 2022. The new strain has 34 more mutations in BA2 and 36 more mutations in XBB15, dubbed the Kraken. And this emerged last fall that led to all the fervor over the recent booster campaign and so forth. Now, it's important to recognize an important immunologic finding that we've discussed extensively known as the law of declining virulence. And that is, as a pathogen evolves, it, it tries to improve its ability to infect more people, but it does so at an expense. And that expense is losing virulence. So there's this trade-off between transmissibility and loss of violence. And this is exactly what we've seen. This is exactly what we want to have happen. You want to catch something and have it not be so pathogenic that people die. This happened with Omicron. We've talked about how the infection fatality rate from Omicron is like 1 50th compared to that of the alpha variant from COVID-19 that emerged in the March and early part of 2020. We've seen that to be true. We've covered this data extensively since 2021. We talked about it during the Omicron outbreak uh, around Thanksgiving time in 2021, many people wrote nasty comments on this page, said, you don't know what you're talking about, stay in your lane, this is not true, what if you're wrong? And it turned out to be true. So we strongly suspect, and I say we, the scientific community strongly suspects that this Omicron subvariant that the media is really talking about now will be something that no one will remember in four to six weeks. Why? Because many people already have T-cell immunity, adaptive immunity, antibodies against this. It's very unlikely that if you've already seen the whole virus, that you're going to die suddenly when you see a new strain of this. In fact, you know, some of the symptoms of this new scary doomsday variant are runny nose, the sniffles, getting a common cold, having a sore throat, and feeling lousy for a few days. So it's important to understand that this uh, is a known concept in immunology. It's been known since early 1900s. We've talked about this. The media continues to ignore this. In fact, fact checkers uh, went after me over an Instagram post saying that this is not, how could you dare say this? No one in the scientific community is saying this, but there's a large dossier of literature showing that the law of declining virulence holds true for viruses, for bacteria, and so forth. So an expert even was quoted in this particular article saying the most likely scenario is that this variant fizzles out and in a month, nobody other than people like me even remember that it existed. And this is a, a scientist who studies this extensively. So this law of declining virulence holds true. We've seen this with Omicron throughout the pandemic. So I'm not sure why the media loves to scare people with these concepts and talk about why we need to bring back masking and distancing and hand washing. When lest I remind you, those strategies were not very effective. If you look at mask mandates during the end of 2021 and early part of 2022, when Omicron peaked, there were vaccine mandates, mask mandates, social distancing, and a lot of schools were not even in session but that was the peak of the cases throughout the entire pandemic. So it's important to recognize that. Now, here's what CBS News says. The title of this story is New COVID Variant BA286 Spreading in the U.S. in August of 2023. Here are key facts experts want you to know. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and World Health Organization say they have been closely tracking the emergence of a new highly mutated COVID-19 variant that scientists have labeled BA286. When compared to the XXB15 variant, which drove a wave earlier this year and was picked out to be targeted by the upcoming fall booster shots, BA286 has 36 mutations. Sequences from early Omicron variants in 2021 also had similar numbers of mutations when compared relative to the original strain of the virus. BA286 mutations include changes in key parts of the virus that could help the variant dodge the body's immune system from prior infection or vaccinations. The thing that you need to recognize here is that T cells are widely adaptable and plastic and malleable. So when they see related futures of a virus, if you see them again, it's likely that you will enhance a T cell repertoire. And this is why metabolic health is so important. This is why nutrition, why exercise, why sleep, why stress management, why vitamin D... All these things are so important because these pathogens are not going away. So you should improve your host immune health and focus more on the terrain instead of the pathogen. If we just myopically focus on the pathogen and pretend that we can avoid this pathogen as it evolves more ways to uniquely infect us, that is a myopic strategy that clearly hasn't worked up to now. So it's time we focus on this. And the CDC really, what they'd like to talk about here, and this is a, a screenshot from the CDC's recent update of the 23rd of this month, 
they again talk about how this has 36 mutations. That's what the media, more and more mutations. But really what that means is that we should focus on immune health so that your T cell repertoire has the ability to surmount a severe infection. The CDC says BA286 is a newly designated variant of SARS-CoV-2 that has a number of additional mutations compared with previously detected Omicron variants. Specifically, the genetic sequence of BA286 has changes that represent over 30 amino acid differences compared with BA2, which was the dominant Omicron variant variant in early 2022. BA286 has more than 35 amino acid changes compared with the more recently circulating XXB. It's kind of getting redundant here. The number of genetic differences is roughly the same magnitude as seen between the initial Omicron variant and previous variants such as Delta, but it's still part of the Omicron lineage. So yes, it might have different amino acid sequences, but what we should be focusing on is studies like this. This was actually published in April of 2023. Diabetes trends in youth. Type 2 diabetes prevalence in the 10 to 19 year old population has doubled over the past two decades. And so what we see here with poor metabolic health, you have poor immune health. The T cell repertoire, the what's known as thymic involution or the atrophy of the thymus gland, which is where your T cells originate. These are, these are factors that lead to immune incompetence. In fact, we now know that cardiovascular disease and obesity are things that we actually should be focusing on. These are the new variants of human health that deserve and warrant attention and the sound of alarm. In fact, this study from the Journal of the American Medical Association titled Cardiovascular Risk Factors, Prevalence, Treatment, and Control in U.S. Adults Between the Ages of 20 and 44 and this was during the years 2009 to March of 2020. We know those stats since 2020 are even worse. And scientists, multiple scientists commented on this article saying, this warrants more attention. This warrants media attention, recognition from doctors, and more action on people to optimize their cardiovascular and metabolic health. And if you look here, the prevalence of obesity is now more than 40%. When I wrote the book, Belly Fat Effect, it was like 33%, and that was just nine years ago. So we are seeing dramatic increases in metabolic disease, in obesity, but you still see the Chick-fil-A line. You see the jack-in-the-box line. You see what kids are eating uh, by the government-funded school lunches. These people seemingly don't understand what really warrants concern, and that's why I get so irked or bothered by the media focusing on a pathogen that's never going away and telling people to throw on a mask while they shovel fast food down their throats and cause their immune system to become more incompetent. So should you be concerned about this new variant? It's likely you're going to be exposed to it, uh, just like you were exposed to all the other variants. So the onus is upon you to take the healthy lifestyle, nutrition, and exercise measures to make sure that you're optimizing your immune health. One of the things we talk a lot about here is exercise. Exercise is one of the best ways to support your immune health. We talked about that in a video earlier that we posted earlier this week, how it purges senescent T cells, how it helps prevent thymic involution and the atrophy of your thymus gland that is so important for helping your T cell and T cell repertoire for being healthy. So if you're worried about getting sick, you should be really focused on your lifestyle. That's what the media should be sounding the alarm bell on. The prevalence of obesity, cardiometabolic disease is increasing in all age categories and all groups and all demographics throughout the US and the world. That's what we should be focusing on. That's what scientists should be sounding the alarm about. We need to move away from fear of acute illnesses from infections and focus more on preventing long-term lifestyle induced and diet induced diseases. Those are my thoughts on this. I would love to know what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comment section below. As always, my friends, you know what to do. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, share this with a friend, and please make the right choices. If you're worried about your immune system, you're worried about your family getting sick and missing school, missing work, focus on your lifestyle. This is why the rates of COVID were and hospitalizations and death were so bad here in the U.S. It's because of our lifestyle. It's not because people weren't wearing masks or social distancing or fill in the blank. It's because we are eating processed, crappy foods and our immune systems are incompetent as a result. And so therefore we cannot surmount a, a, a in, uh, an immune response that will overcome a severe infection. So it's time that we focus on the right thing, and I hope that you spread this message because for some reason the media isn't talking about it. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.